Being a watch reviewer is no easy task. Put it this way, you review a watch, it doesn't go well, and you lay your thoughts to the public. Someone who has bought that watch previously and who loves that watch is going to attack you vociferously. Unfortunately, I have to remain true and balanced. In today's video, I'm reviewing another Pagani. I have reviewed two Paganis before, the first of which arrived dead on arrival, and the second one, which is a speedy homage, just wasn't up to scratch. Today, I'm hoping to set things straight. We've got our third Pagani to give him a chance. How did it fare? Find out after this. Hi there and welcome to John's Watch Joint. Today is my third Pagani. I have had two Paganis before, as I said in the intro, and things didn't go too well and things got heated on the comments. Uh, we shall move on. Um, today we're going to start off with the specifications of the watch. So this is the Pagani Design PD1723 version 2. Never saw the version 1 in hand, so I can't really uh, tell you what the differences are. Um, but this is an homage to the vintage Air King, as can be seen when you see the watch. So let's get right into it and start with the packaging. So what do you get? Well, it comes in an outer, encapsulating the box here. box is a nice sturdy box, decently well made, no complaints there. Inside the box you get the Pagani Design clean cloth. You get the Pagani Design, I always get that upside down, hang tag, which is fine. You also get your instruction manual. And then you get your warranty card, which annoys me because they never ever date it and sign it, so it's, it's kind of annoying. And inside, of course, you obviously get the watch, along with a little strap resizing tool, because this is screw pin uh, adjustment, so we'll get to that one later on. Oh, and I nearly forgot, before I get to the watch, they also send you this uh, NATO strap as well. Kind of a wee bit disappointed because I thought it was going to be one of these elasticated straps. Never had one, so I fancied uh, having a look at it. But hey, good quality strap, that's fine, no problem. And now to the watch. So this is the Pagani Design PD1723 version 2, and it's homaging, of course, the vintage Air King. Um, they've done a really good job on their uh, first impressions here. Now, uh, the, the case is entirely made of 316L stainless steel, including the screw-in crown and the screw-down case back. And you've actually got an open case back there. And uh, you have sapphire glass on the back there to see the movement as well as a uh, dome sapphire on the front with a bit of AR coating on it as well. So as you can see there, putting it into the light, it's still very legible. Now the movement inside this case is the Chinese PT5000. I've had a couple of these before. I have no issues with them and I do rate them. They're very good. They have a 38 hour power reserve. It's a 25 joule movement and it beats at 28,800 beats per hour. Really good movement. Quite accurate. This one is running to plus nine seconds per day. Uh, it's a hacking and hand winding movement. So as you can see here, I've set the hands to just about ten to two. Uh, I've popped the crown. Um, the only thing is, it does have a ghost date for a function in it. So when you pull it out to the first position, and you you can feel it turning over there. You can feel the date rotating in the background, so it doesn't do anything. So if you pull it out to the second position, hacks the movement and it stops it, and then you can adjust the time. All right, pushing it back in winds the movement and with this movement as you increase the, the, the um, reserve in the spring you can actually feel it tightening that's nothing to worry about that is normal to the movement so as I say this one's working perfectly well yeah so it's looking very good now just for information the price I paid for this watch was £136 that was delivered to the UK that came from Trendy Men's Watch Store on AliExpress and I'll leave a link uh, below in the description for you Right, I'd just like to say today, please excuse the noise in the background, we've got an RAF exercise going on today from the local RAF base, and it's like they're trying to sabotage this video. <laughs> right, so just to go through the specifications for you here, it's a 37mm diameter case, not 36 as advertised. It's a 44mm lug-to-lug distance, which is really nice, and the lug width is 20mm. Uh, the thickness of the watch is 12.4mm. So really nice specs, nice curve down on the lugs, and uh, with that uh, domed uh, sapphire there, just the whole aesthetic of the watch is very nice indeed. And I think they've, they've done a good job there. Now, looking at the sides of the watch, you'll see that you get high polishing down the sides there. It's not just a flat side. So that will help uh, the watch be resilient against scratching. 
Finishing is done to a really good standard for a Pagani, and I must admit, I'll just try and get closer in here. So I'll do it here, let you see properly. So normally I have real problems with Pagani's finishing, so when they actually cross over from the lugs uh, to their bracelets, you usually see where the difference in quality comes. Here, not so much. You can see it's well brushed here. you got a linear brush, and that brushing is continued down onto the bracelet. So uh, full credit for that. You can see just in here, it's not quite what you would expect, but it's done very well. So yeah, I'd, I'd give them very good marks uh, for that one. You have a high polished bezel, and that uh, works really, really well with that high sapphire crystal there. So it works extremely well. The lug transition is quite sharp. There's no chamfered edge, it's just a straight polish to brushed. No issues with that at all. You'll see that uh, it's continued down the side of the bracelet. So you have the polish sides going down polish sides of the bracelet. The bracelet itself is from 20 millimeters, tapers down to 16, and then back up to 18 at the clasp. And as you'll see there, articulates pretty well. The last couple of links here are a little bit iffy. You'll see they're, they're hanging there and they're not hanging quite right. There's a little bit of a sticky point here. But it's really nothing to complain about because once it's on wrist, they're going to be pretty much sitting like that anyway. When it comes to the bracelet, we have a real issue with this bracelet. This, again, the finishing could be better on here. However, it's infinitely better than the Speedy Homage I did a couple of weeks ago. And I'll leave a link in the description below to that video if you want to see it. Because I kind of annihilated that watch because of the bracelet. All the value in that watch was in the head. This one is a lot better, maybe 5 out of 10, the other one was pretty much a 0. Um, the clasp itself, opening it up, is fine. Finished very well under here, you have high polish along with brushed. Shiny here, nice and thick, not overly wobbly. But the problem I have with this is, the micro adjust with it. It just, it will not budge. So I cannot, there's a glide lock system in here and I cannot unlock it, therefore I can't size it. So unfortunately, yet again, Pagani are letting down where it counts most. <sighs> but that's really disappointing because the watch, up until now, has been superb on the top, it's really good. But the bracelet leaves something wanting yet again. It's still full of sharp edges. The overall design and the aesthetic, if it worked, Excuse me, I'll just polish it a little bit here. As I'm handling it, it's getting a bit grimy. Uh, the overall aesthetic did work with the watch and it balances out the head. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work. I can't resize this watch at all. I can't, can't get it to sit on my wrist. And uh, I'll also show you, I'll put a little thing up here just now and I'll show you me trying to uh, size this watch. One of the screw pins, I took the screw out and then put it back in when it was resized. It just kept turning and turning so it's threaded so I can't secure the bracelet either. So the, the bracelet is basically in this case US. So Pagani, well done. You spawned a really good review and you've done it again. But let's ha have a look at the face here. What have they done with the face? So the crystal is beautiful. The AR coating is excellent. The, the head itself is lovely. The, and the actual face is, is really nice. It's a matte black. Um, but with that crystal, you look at it and it dances with the light. It almost looks gloss. The hands, I think they are maybe a, a fraction short, but I kind of like them. I think the first version, I believe, had longer hands. But look at what they've done at the 12 o'clock. So they've got a, a large triangle. Within that triangle, they have another three triangles. So it's really interesting and well done. P Pagani logo is applied, uh, and they've taken away the Pagani design. I think that's the correct thing to do. And look how well they've applied those indices and how they play with the light. So again, top marks for that. That little reel track around the side, I believe they brought that in from the first uh, version as well. I think that's the right thing to do. It dances with the edge there of uh, the crystal. So again, they've done really, really well. They've even signed the crown. So the head for me, I'm really chuffed with this watch. Had I bought this watch without this bracelet, I'd be really happy. But the bracelet and the watch are the aesthetic of what this watch is homaging. So it has to be right. So unfortunately, though I love the head of the watch, this clasp and bracelet, again, are really lit in the side. And you can see here how these links sometimes stick as well. It's something Pagani, you have to listen to. We're telling you, you have to get this right and you're not listening. So Pagani, please listen. All right, so let's go and have a wee look at the loom shot now in the loom cupboard. 
All right then folks, here we are back in the cupboard of doom. Don't like being in here. All right, you can see here that the luminescence looks not too bad on the 12 o'clock indice, uh, the 3, 6 and 9. And you can see it has actually got loomed hand as well. And it also has luminescence on the five minute markers. Those small five minute markers, which I thought were just paint, they are luminescence as well. Uh, one thing I, I uh, do question whether it's super luminova. I think it's actually C3 luminova, not super luminova. And as you can see there, the hands and the five minute markers are already dissipating. But it's a lot better than I anticipated. However, they're homaging a very expensive watch with good loom. So perhaps they could have maybe push the boat out a bit further, but not bad at all. Okay, back to the studio. Okay, we survived the, the loom cupboard there. So let's get back to the watch and we'll get this on my wrist. On my wrist today, I actually got Dan Henry, 1975, skin diver. I got this in the mail yesterday. I got this because my first watch was a skin diver uh, from Timex in uh, 1975, that year, same year. And this watch is pretty much like that. I'll put a little picture up here. And you can see that Timex and how this watch kind of mirrors that. And I loved that watch to death till I beat it to death. Twice I had two of them. So uh, I'm going to be reviewing this in the next week or so. So pay attention for that one. Right, let's get this thing on the wrist. So here is the watch on my six and three quarter inch wrist. And as you can see, it wears extremely well. That 37 millimeter is just about perfect for my wrist. Turn down on the lugs, works very well. And um, with them being 44 millimeters, it fits supremely well there. So wears very well. Unfortunately, it wears very loose on me. I've taken all the links out that I can take out of this thing. And because I can't adjust it on the glide lock, and I've also got to watch for that pin falling out, I can't actually get it to my size. So it's very unfortunate because had the bracelet been right, it's a beautiful looking watch. It looks good. The finishing otherwise is good on this. It's this thing here, lets it down. And obviously you can't have pins falling out of the bracelet. That's just, it's just not on Pagani, is it really? So how would I summarize this? All right, so let's break it into two, two sections here. The head of the watch for its aesthetic and its homage value. And it's just looks value. It's, it's excellent. Uh, the choice of movement is excellent. Priced with the bracelet, it's overly priced now, simply because if you look at the second part of this, the bracelet, it's a zero out of 10. You can't secure, you can't size, therefore you can't wear. It's a zero out of 10. Pagani, sort it out, will you? Anyway, that's rant over. Am I gonna say I'm not gonna recommend this watch? No, I'm gonna say I would recommend you buy this watch, but not on the bracelet, if you're gonna buy it, Get it on a leather, get it on a NATO or something, or get yourself a bracelet that will fit it. And um, so, more of a plod it there than anything else. I'm going to pass the watch, but it's just an absolute no for the bracelet. So, anyway, this is John from John's Watch Joint. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra for now.